Hello, good evening. Uh, today, I would like to lecture on Chapter 11 of the Management Information System uh, titling Ethical and Social Issues in Information System. First, I would like to cover on the learning objective in this uh, very last chapter of the syllabus this semester. So we will be discussing what are uh, the ethical, social and political issues in relation to using, uh, applying uh, any information system in our daily life, whether it is for uh, <clears throat> working purposes or is, uh, for entertainment or for business. What are the specific or existing principles for conduct uh, to be used uh, in ethically using information system? What uh, do the contemporary information system technology then and the internet that could pose problems or challenges in protecting individual privacy uh, of the user and also intellectual property at large? And have uh, and how? Have information system affected our daily life in terms of socialization, uh, health, and also lifestyle. Uh, this chapter basically discussing how IT in relation to ethics of using IT system. So this kind of a scenery, I think, quite familiar nowadays in the campus, in which people are most uh, are mostly preoccupied with. Uh, using or seeing the uh, the smartphone while walking or while waiting for bus so in almost every aspect we are dependent upon our uh, it system in the name of smartphone nowadays okay i would like to touch also uh, some general issue regarding uh, it intellectual property and commercial issues so in recent years, uh, we have been bugged down with the uh, current legal issue on information technology access, export, and it involves uh, international trade too. So actually, this issue is uh, quite uh, general uh, in terms of uh, IT uh, implication of business. For example, uh, back in uh, 2018, soon after President Trump uh, became the United States uh, president. So he could somehow observe that China will be the main trade for US dominance in um, economy and commerce. So based uh, on their perception that they think that China uh, must be somehow uh, be uh, manage uh, or being somehow controlled in their uh, technology dominance. So this uh, turned out to uh, to be that uh, the Department of Commerce of the United States imposed ban uh, towards uh, Huawei business operation. Okay, and the question is why only Huawei, uh, not Samsung, and not other Japanese uh, smartphone maker like Sony. So the question is, why only Huawei? So uh, they claim that uh, Huawei is a threat to national security of the US. And uh, they claim that uh, Huawei advanced in production and uh, implementation of 5G technology uh, control will somehow influence the US, uh, which are slightly uh, lagging in terms of uh, 5G technology uh, uh, control and its standard. So they claim that China uh, are creating much deficit of the United States uh, business. And these are all about market dominance uh, in which the, uh, the new coming uh, business in the market like Huawei, they are so strong in the market and also uh, in many IT appliances so us is trying to put some pressure in order to mitigate or slightly uh, lessen down the dominance of uh, chinese uh, companies and chinese product so as a result uh, us uh, commerce uh, <clears throat> through uh, google so they ban uh, the uh, use uh, the use of uh, google apps on huawei smartphone 
What, what do you think the implication of uh, this uh, on legal issue on IT and ethics? So when you see your competitor is getting stronger and much better in producing high tech product, so you start using some other means of uh, trade in order to uh, push uh, pu uh, push down the pressure. So this uh, results of the trade uh, imbalance. Uh, in other words, uh, US start imposing uh, uh, tariff on China uh, export to United States, and it in, it involves a huge sum amount uh, to the billions level, and as a result, uh, Chinese government also impose another uh, tariff set for American export to the United States, uh, be it in the Boeing airplane or be uh, on like a agricultural product like wheat and so on. So this kind of uh, commercial uh, tussle or business um, uh, business tariff is uh, very counterproductive as far as uh, technological advancement is, uh, is concerned. So all, are all these claims real? Are all these claims uh, for uh, sure has legal basis or not? So it is a subject of discussion on many international settings. However, of, a recent, uh, of recent times, it seems uh, that uh, even the U.S. official are admitting that uh, Huawei, uh, Chinese company, are uh, uh, beginning to produce high quality product. So that is a part of their concern. So in uh, recent um, times and a news report, it says that ultimately uh, U.S. company will collaborate uh, with uh, 5G technology company from China like Huawei in order to develop a standard international platform for IT communication and also for uh, telecommunication uh, protocols. So these are quite a relevant legal issue pertaining to ethics and using IT in terms of uh, network, in terms of communication, so that a student and us, we have to realize uh, this uh, current legal and ethical issue on IT uh, usage. Well, uh, this uh, ethics issue in using uh, information system has been, uh, for many decades, uh, been debated. It is uh, ethics about the principle of right and wrong, that uh, the individuals uh, acting as uh, free users to make choices to get the, their behavior over the internet, so over the, or over the uh, information technology network. So these are the main issues being discussed in this chapter. So it was back uh, perhaps uh, almost uh, <clears throat> two decades ago. So there was uh, IT uh, scam uh, that uh, with the name of uh, Madoff uh, Ponzi scheme. Uh, Madoff is a, a Wall Street uh, traders uh, that trade shares uh, and propose good return for investment for uh, many users or many customers. So uh, Madoff or Ponzi scheme use uh, IT system in order to promote their scheme. And uh, many users have been uh, using this uh, scheme in order uh, to expect for uh, good return for their investment. So this scheme uses IT system, IT network, uh, so IT operation, and uh, Madoff Ponzi scheme promise as much as 32% return of investment for their customers. So I think 32% re uh, return on investment is very uh, high. So this could be quite too good to be true. Normally investment return at the level of uh, 10 to 15% is considered uh, good some amount of return already. So this is three times than that. So it proved uh, that uh, by the end of the uh, scheme that uh, this uh, scheme is uh, considered Ponzi scheme or it is get rich scheme. So since it uses IT system, so is it ethically proper or ethically correct to use information system to cheat people as far as investment is concerned. So this is uh, another aspect of information system and ethic. Should you use uh, technology and tool uh, to uh, <coughs> cheat people uh, on their investment scheme? So this is another unethical use of information system 
as a, as a clear example. So um, IT uh, and ethical uh, and social issues uh, is actually interrelated. It is a model for thinking about this relation between these uh, three parameters, like ethical, social, and political issue uh, on the use of um, information technology application. It is said that all these ethical, social, and political issues uh, is like a tree combination, um, uh, like a society uh, in relation uh, to as come as pawn. So when you see it is a pond like a swimming pool that when you uh, throw a rock uh, into the swimming pool and the pond uh, will create ripples or waves and that is uh, the depiction of instability of uh, IT system in which uh, when somebody use it unethically. So it involves uh, many layers of society, for example, the users, the technology provider, uh, the society at large, uh, the cultural aspect of it. So it involves uh, some changes in our social life as its ripple effects. So I give you an example, a typical uh, usage of IT system in the in the financial sector, for example. So have you heard of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum? It is a digital uh, money so system in which uh, quite many uh, developed countries have been using it. Among the pioneer is in Japan, uh, US and Europe, Singapore. So this has been quite famous in terms of uh, its usage, which is uh, digital money. One system is known as uh, Bitcoin. Okay, uh, back in the few years ago, like three three years ago, one one Bitcoin equals to almost eighty thousand ringgit uh, in Malaysia. So whether you use it ethically or unethically due to its convenience and due to its simplicity, you may not have to bring a lot of money or cash in uh, when you travel overseas to buy things. So this digital money, you can uh, purchase goods in Japan uh, just by paying this uh, about 80,000 ring of Malaysia for one Bitcoin and you can uh, purchase things and shopping around the world. However, due to it is technological base and customer base, it could be uh, unethically correct uh, when the value is fluctuating very large. For example, nowadays uh, one Bitcoin worth about 40,000. But three years ago, one Bitcoin equals to eight, almost 80,000. So over the years, uh, the value of Bitcoin fluctuate very much. Nowadays, it has only half of the value when it was back in 2017. So is it ethical in terms of uh, IT and it uses uh, in our daily life? So it's up to, it's open for debate. So society is as calm as a pawn like this. So we use, uh, I, we use IT system for many uh, usages, like for uh, individual use, uh, uh, society use. So it is a matter of whether you can, you have that accountability to use the IT system. What are your rights in using an information system? And what kind of quality, uh, system quality that you have uh, in your network or in your IT gadget or in your IT equipment and also involve the quality of life as far as uh, policy and society is concerned. Right. So is, for example, is a uh, downloading free music is ethical. So those are among the issues that very much interrelated between uh, ethics, social and political issues when using information system. The textbook highlighted the five moral dimension of information age. So in what perspective that you can have a look on is a moral perspective first the information right and its obligation. So the property rights and its obligation, the accountability aspect and control of IT information system, the system quality in terms of the technology system quality and the quality of life. So let's take a look on the individual five moral dimension of this uh, information age. Okay. Key technology trends that raise ethical issue, uh, since technology are improving uh, very fast and they are 
uh, increasing the speed uh, very fast. Uh, you have uh, known that the speed of microprocessor uh, doubling uh, almost every one and a half year. So on top of that, uh, IT technology in terms of storage, the cost of uh, storage is uh, rapidly declining. So it is much cheaper nowadays to keep information in, uh, com in comparison to 10 or 15 years ago. So the, network, uh, the, network, the networking advances and the internet in terms of transferring data, copying data, it become much uh, faster and very much easier nowadays. So the other ethic, ethical and social issue relating uh, to system is the advancement of data analytic uh, as far as uh, security is concerned, security of uh, uh, some nation, for example. The process of the data uh, using data analytics software in profiling. They create a database uh, to have the relation between individuals and its past record as far as crimes as far as uh, their behavior and so on. So these are part of the uh, national security uh, priority for the United States, for example. So mobile device can be used as uh, tools for tracking location for individuals. So those are part of uh, the ethical issue, whether uh, IT system has been used res responsibly or unethically. This uh, example for the United States uh, Defense uh, uh, National Security Matter, they call it NORA technology. It stands for Non-Obvious Relationship Awareness. They create a very big database under FBI, uh, CIA, and also NSA. So in order to have a monitoring system for individuals that are coming to the United States uh, for observation or for uh, some kind of uh, security uh, monitoring. So they create the watch uh, list or I would say uh, kind of uh, wanted individual list and they keep the database of incident, arrest or past record of uh, I would say crimes that uh, this watch list individual have been listed. So they can track also uh, this individual watch list transaction as far as credit card is concerned uh, and as far as purchase and payment uh, is concerned. Uh, the watch also monitored telephone records and of course the individual information of this uh, watch list individual. So they are all merged into a single database and the system will give alert to, well, for example, the FBI, police or customs and immigration as far as when this individual entered the United States. So uh, his or her name will pop up from the system so that the immigration can uh, have a closer uh, check, detail, uh, I would say, uh, checking on the individual. So are uh, this kind of system considered ethical as far as uh, IT uh, usage is concerned? So for a certain nation is considered ethical and for some other human uh, freedom of expression, human freedom of uh, traveling, it may not be ethical. So it depends on which perspective you are looking at from. So in other, in basic uh, perspective is that for ethical analysis, system of IT must be used uh, responsibly. Uh, it must be used uh, with accountability. There are liability uh, in using IT system when we use it uh, illegally and there are system for due process in which you may uh, find it uh, on legal perspective as uh, breaching the law and you are liable for uh, legal uh, case uh, sue in the court. So basically five step ethical analysis is uh, uh, example like plagiarism in which uh, nowadays is uh, quite easy to claim somebody else work as your work but the, due to plagiarism is uh, basically uh, the usage of other people's intellectual work like 
writings, record, uh, music, uh, and you claim it as your own. So, in order to uh, in order not to be uh, claim as plagiarized, you have to declare where is the source of your uh, reference of your work. Uh, if it uh, involves uh, second party or third party, you have to de declare in your uh, intellectual work. So these are a few perspectives of ethical analysis that you may uh, need to consider when uh, using other people's intellectual property. Ethics in information society, uh, there are a few uh, <clears throat> ethical principles that we must simply uh, need to follow. So the first uh, ethical principle, they call it a golden rule. Golden rule uh, claims that uh, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. In other words, don't uh, do to others if you don't want others to do it to you. So that is the first golden rule. It means that if you, do, if you don't want people to plagiarize your work in the first place, you don't have to plagiar, plagiarize other people's work. So that is uh, the golden rule, the basic first rule. The second ethical principle, they call it uh, Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative principle. So Immanuel Kant is this. So basically, he uh, stated that if an action is not right for everyone to take, it is not everyone. It's not right for every, everyone. So it means that nobody can take that action. Uh, then other people uh, also cannot repeat that same action. For example, if you are queuing uh, to uh, board the electric train like MRT or commuter in KL, so. Uh, the right uh, approach to do is by queuing. So if nobody, uh, if nobody is acceptable to cut the queue, it means that uh, everyone is not right uh, to cut the queue. So you have to follow the queue as uh, everyone else. So that is an example. So the third ethical principle uh, is uh, Descartes' rule of change. This is a picture of Descartes. Descartes claims that if an action cannot be taken repeatedly, it is not right to take at all, right? So if it is uh, wrong uh, to, for example, take other people's property uh, and it cannot surely be repeated and ultimately it's not right to do it at all. So that's what uh, Descartes claim. The fourth uh, ethical principle is named as utilitarian principle. Uh, utilitarian principle uh, claim that take the action that achieve uh, the higher and the greater value, right? So you have to do something which give higher or greater value uh, instead of the lower uh, and uh, less uh, value. So for example, if uh, you are supposed to, for example, uh, save, uh, uh, for example, you have to uh, uh, save uh, people from danger. So you have to save uh, the people which are most vulnerable, for example, uh, the old people, so that has a higher value in terms of uh, utilitarian uh, principle. Okay, the fifth uh, ethical principle is a risk aversion principle. It is to avoid risk uh, principle that uh, you need to take action uh, to avoid uh, bigger risk, all right? So it is claiming that take action that produce the least harm or the lowest potential cost. For example, if you have to uh, save uh, your hard drive uh, uh, to uh, save uh, your work uh, file, so you have to save uh, the uh, drive that is, of course, containing uh, the biggest storage in order uh, in comparison to the uh, lowest storage. So you, you save uh, much bigger hard drive capacity in comparison to the uh, least uh, 
uh, storage capacity. The last but not least principle in the ethical uh, IT perspective is ethical uh, no free lunch. In this world, it seems that some of the aspect of our lives is free. For example, Facebook is free, uh, Google is free. So technically, uh, it is not free. If it is free, then how come uh, Google uh, and Facebook, uh, the owner are uh, the only is one of the richest men in the world. Actually, it's not free. Somebody else are paying for advertisement in uh, Google for, for their commercial product. So uh, it seems like free, but in actually, in actual perspective, it is not free. Somebody else is paying for it, for you to get the free service. That's why in the many <clears throat> professional uh, work area, they have a professional code of conduct. For example, doctor, they have the medical professional code of conduct in which, for example, uh, the confidential information of patient cannot be told to other people. Okay, and the priority is to save life first in comparison to other aspect of asset, right? So those are professional conducts. As such, uh, not only doctor, lawyers, uh, professional manager, they have also professional conducts in, uh, in order to conduct their work or follow the rules, uh, guidelines and regulation. So in the whole world, basically, uh, most professional uh, work uh, or most professional uh, people, they have a code of on, uh, conduct, not only doctors, uh, not only lawyers, it includes army, it includes uh, IT professional like uh, uh, software engineer, so they have uh, their their own uh, code of conduct in order to uh, do their work. So in this uh, modern world, uh, we have the rights for assessing information freely. So that is the uh, the name uh, by the name of privacy. Privacy means uh, claims of individual to be left alone on their own free from surveillance and interference from other individual or from other uh, supervision by organization and claim <coughs> to be able to control information uh, about uh, you yourself as a user of internet. So this privacy is uh, the basic expectation for using the internet on privacy. And uh, it is expected that by using information system ethically we have to have a fair information practices in which your information is fairly being used by other people and you are expected so. So no, no people are using uh, or selling your information without your knowledge, without your acknowledgement, or without your permission that is expected for uh, information fair practice. However, uh, that information could uh, also be uh, misused, right? So <clears throat> in Malaysia nowadays, we have, uh, this is what we call CTOS system. It is uh, a ranking of, I would, uh, I would say, uh, reliability of the individual to engage or to get financial support like loan, to buy car or to buy house. Uh, in the olden days, uh, previously, this CTOS system uh, was uh, a commercial body. Uh, so your information pertaining your loans and your security and your financial status is being kept by a private company. So um, Malaysian uh, government found out that this is not a fair practice. So now they create this CITOS database and they park it under uh, Bank Negara. So Bank Negara keep your ranking, uh, the health, uh, the healthiness of your uh, financial status uh, by having this CITOS database. CITOS is uh, index uh, maximum 800, right? If you have a higher score around 7 to 800, uh, you are uh, classified as green. If you have like 600 or 500 level, you are considered as uh, insecure in terms of uh, financially. It means that you uh, have a lot of debt. And if you are, of course, uh, in the very uh, weak financial status or bankrupt, so you have, a, uh, of course, uh, low score as far as uh, 300 uh, or uh, low scores. 
So this information uh, seems like uh, important for certain organization, for example, for banks uh, to uh, gauge your ability to pay back loan or to pay back debts. So uh, when you apply loans uh, to bank for, for example, to purchase a car, and uh, normally that bank, uh, so normally that a bank will check your standing at uh, CITOS uh, at Bank Negara. So that bank will have to pay for one individual record check about uh, 26 uh, ringgit 50 cent. And that bank will have your score level. So if, you, if your score is around 700, that might be still good, right? 500, maybe it is yellow alert. And definitely if red, it is considered uh, as almost bankrupt. So you won't be able to get loan if you have a lower score level, uh, three or 400 at CITOS. So again, CITOS, is it ethical or not ethical? Because it affects uh, people's uh, ability to apply loan. So that is another issue. So if we don't have the system, what, what would happen? If we have the system, what would uh, happen? Because all these based on information system that is being kept at Bank Negara as part of the financial monitoring of uh, individuals. So I think uh, in the moral dimension of the information system, you can look, uh, look at it in many perspectives as far as security is concerned, for example, security of a nation or enforcement agency that uh, part of their job to protect um, other people from crimes and criminals. So these are many perspectives of a moral dimension in information system. Okay, so now we come to a question that uh, what are the challenges or problem uh, on internet with respect to privacy? For example, you know uh, what cookies is all about? Cookies is basically a small record of your browsing at the internet. So uh, basically a uh, server could detect you uh, could track your uh, serve at the internet. So that is in the name of cookies, right? So where else, uh, web beacon or bugs, uh, basically this is normally embedded uh, in email in which when you uh, open email with this web box, that email will uh, be transferred uh, to your uh, computer memory and your hard drive. So it can create problems uh, when you open such a uh, bad email uh, from marketing spammers. Spyware is basically monitoring uh, your computer usage, right? In uh, normally they spy for uh, critical information like password or some key information related to financial uh, and uh, credit card numbers and so on. So these are considered spyware they, because they are spying for uh, commercial information, that information uh, with value. So Google service also engage in behavioral targeting so that they can identify your preference uh, in surfing internet. What are your interests? What are your most uh, preferred uh, area uh, to look information on the internet? So they could uh, behaviorally uh, target your preference. So how the cookies work, basically, how the server and user engage with each other. For example, this is you as a user. You go to the internet, for example, Amazon.com. You try to find books uh, on management information system, for example. So when you have send that request to uh, Amazon, the server at uh, Amazon will detect uh, what is your operating system of your computer. Uh, what kind of, uh, I would say, browser, is it Explorer or Chrome? And somehow uh, they might be able to identify your, uh, for example, email address like Gmail and so on. So this is the first time access to the server at Amazon.com. Amazon, Amazon uh, server will send back a cookie. Uh, cookie is a tiny text file of user identification that browse uh, the server uh, for website. And when the second time you come to Amazon server, basically this server already identify you, your perhaps uh, IT protocol uh, number, right? And identify you as a second visitor or uh, they have visited earlier. So as such, server will detect you and they uh, might be able to detect you as Jane Doe, as individual name. So these are 
how the cookies identify web visit a visitor and normally it is automatically done by software on the server so is it uh, ethically acceptable to track like this or uh, it depends it depends on many perspectives however in the united states itself so the government's uh, rules and uh, regulation allows a business to uh, record or keep transaction information on users uh, particularly for marketing purposes so they allow so in the us perhaps it is more uh, open and they treat it as uh, not uh, uh, is uh, no issues so it can be done but perhaps in other other countries like in japan it might not be so like in china so it might not be so so it depends uh, on countries and its uh, rules and regulation on using it so what are the solution for these challenges this problem uh, ethics in using information system there, there are a few suggested and existing solution for example on technical solution uh, your email that you send to your friend so normally this email is uh, not in the form of actual what you write uh, when you it, it's transferred over the internet so it is encrypted it is kind of uh, being dispersed uh, the actual content and later it's assembled back at the receiver so this is the encryption purpose in order for your actual email content uh, not being able to be read in the whole document form by other people who are not supposed to receiving it at the other end so you could use also anonymity tools when surfing internet uh, in order not to be detected who you are for example by using incognito software you could install also anti-spyware tool like firewalls uh, into your computer so that it is uh, not easily breached by sp uh, spyware software that could be sent uh, through email for example uh, you could set the uh, you could set the uh, technical solution as a in your uh, in your browser uh, like chrome you could set your browsing mode as private or you could enable a do not track option and those are a few technical uh, solution that user can use in order to protect their information right when using the information system over the internet The moral dimension of information system uh, on uh, property rights, including uh, intellectual property, IP, they call it. So intellectual property uh, are quite diverse in terms of meaning. It could be in the form of trade secret. Okay, for example, industrial uh, production recipe or formula in order to produce product, like in the food sector, like in the chemical industry they have uh, many formulas in order to produce their product or it could be in the form of copyright for example uh, electronic uh, product for example like books uh, for example like uh, music so those are uh, ip category uh, which is under copyright and normally uh, author are protected for 70 years on their uh, on their uh, uh, final product that they created in the form of uh, perhaps books or music and so on and ip uh, <coughs> uh, product could be considered under pattern okay when you invent something new a new product or new process you could pattern uh, your product and process and if you're successful patenting it you are protecting uh, you are protected for almost 20 years uh, as far as it's your own exclusive monopoly uh, of a certain invention or process or product that you can keep it for 20 years on your name on your own very individual name so what are the challenges to the in, in this intellectual property rights basically nowadays there are too many digital media instead of a physical media so because it is digital so it is very much easy to replicate it it is easy to copy and it is easy to distribute just distribute over the internet and as such uh, it is uh, considered uh, easy to uh, copy intellectual property uh, media because of its in digital form 
So these are part of the challenge to protect your property rights if it is in the digital media format. So the other aspect of moral dimension in using information system is accountability, liability, and control. So if it is a, a software uh, product, so somehow software product, sometimes it fails. So it is prone to hanging, it prones to crash. So in terms of accountability, uh, liability and control, basically user who users who have purchased a product, they hardly can control in terms of uh, how liable is the product, how, how good is the product, because uh, normally uh, software, they tend to fail. Why uh, software has the ability to fail? Because software is a digital product in which designer or developer cannot test 100% in comparison to physical product like computer, phones, or car, they can test it 100% because it is physical. Where else uh, in the software format, normally it is in digital format, so they could not test fully prior releasing the product. So inside the software, there could be certain kind of uh, error in terms of programming, in terms of looping. So how is this error could be uh, addressed in terms of reliability? So again, this is another challenge in system quality in terms of system error. So software does sometimes got crash, or hang or fail. So nobody could claim uh, the producer as, uh, as uh, responsible because it runs on hardware, uh, the processor, memory, so it runs on dependent upon others. So this is a very hard challenge on data quality and system error. So the moral dimension of information system affect also quality of our life in terms of equity, access, and boundaries. In, in the advanced world, uh, in the nation with a good inf technological infrastructure, they could uh, use internet easily, but how what people who uh, are not fortunate uh, or nation which has uh, lesser capability to access internet. So it creates a gap between the rich nation and also poor nation as far as establishing a more equal quality of life. So as such, it gives negative social consequences in the system for those that have a lesser capability to access internet or change information to transfer data and so on. Well, nowadays, uh, we are so much so dependent upon IT gadget as if we are walking with smartphone, reading our uh, document data as if we are walking zombies, all right? So another moral dimension information system is on crime uh, on computer and it's abused, all right? So uh, it is known like in marketing, they call it uh, like a spam in which you always receive in your email box so for unwanted or unwelcome uh, email from marketing, from banks, from traveling agent, uh, from so many sources. So that could uh, also lead to uh, abuse, right? Because uh, this unsolicited email sent to uh, your mailbox is actually uh, not given permission. So, but it is there in your uh, mailbox. So is it uh, ethical or not ethical by doing so? So again, it depends on your uh, each perspective. So too uh, much uh, using the information system also may lead to health risk. For example, your eyes got, get sore because uh, too long looking at a uh, <clears throat> computer screen that may create uh, eye strain or headaches. Uh, it also uh, contribute to techno stress, fatigue, being impatient, and physically it uh, could create your uh, hands or palm become uh, unhealthy. They call it due to RSI, which is repetitive stress injury because so, uh, so long and so many time typing on the keyboard. So it may lead to CTS, couple tunnel syndrome, in which at the joint uh, between your palm and your hand there, uh, there is a kind of ache uh, due to 
repetitive job typing that you are doing it on the keyboard, for example. So these are some of the moral dimension of information system uh, that exists in our daily life, whether we use it responsibly or unethically, it depends on our perspective. Some, some people, uh, some country treat uh, marketing using spam is acceptable. Some country uh, like in China, it is considered unacceptable. So again, uh, these depend on uh, each nation uh, rules and guidelines in using information system. By that, I will stop uh, this chapter on ethical and social issues information system. I hope it uh, has been beneficial for you to understand this very last chapter on this management information course. And I would like to thanks for your attention. Thank you again.